here's a little trick and illustration. It's using the paint a little thicker than you usually would. So I take a little alizarin and I'm going to be using some surface paint here. So I need a little cadmium, alizarin and cadmium. Now it's a little thicker so that, there we go. It's not quite transparent. That's what I want. Pop it on. Then I'm going to start to spread it out. Keeping it a little thick. Then I'm going to clean my brush off so it's dry. You can feel it on your fingers. It's not quite dry enough yet. I'm going to get that quite dry. And then I'm going to just rearrange that paint with a dry brush, stippling it. Stippling it, patting it, tapping it. Working it into the paper. This really works with this Canson paper. I'm not rubbing the paper really hard. Just tapping it out. And we'll do the same up in the mountain. A little bit thicker paint. Just get a little bit on your brush. Put it on. Tap the brush dry. And then tap it out. You can feel the advantage of dry brushing on the dry paper. Now, a little yellow. And you're basically mixing right on the paper. See the yellow goes on here? Then I put the yellow in here. And you must have a nice fine brush for this. I'm going to bring the yellow right into this white area. Then up, then here, then up. And you're redistributing the paint very gently with a soft brush. And pull it right into this little section right here. See, right along the bottom. So what I do is take a little bit of the cobalt hue. So there's my paint. It's on the brush. It's not super wet, but it's, you know, pretty wet. I don't really want to get my fingers all over the paper, so I'm going to put this here. And here we go. Put a dab in along here. Just like that. I might go up one more. You can uh, you can get super realistic paintings with watercolors using this method. It's ultimate control. Now I notice the process, put the paint on, clean the brush, dry the brush as much as you can, but you know, not over. You can feel it on your finger. If it's cool, that's pretty good. But you gotta get this before it dries. You see, you can't leave it too long. If you leave it, it'll set into the paper. Here, now the paper's totally dry here. And I'm going to dry the brush off again. And see it's all fuzzy? I'm just going to tap out that edge. Look, I've created this over here. Take a look at this. Oh yeah, that's wonderful. Let's start with uh, a pinch of yellow here. And I think I'll use the Azo Yellow Light. Just a very little bit and very thin. See, that's way too much. Just a drop. Yellow and blue make a beautiful turquoise. Still too wet. Dry it right off. And fan it out or stipple it out like that. 
there we go. I think I'll bring a little of this warmth over here. Turn my picture, a little bit of water. Always prime your brush. Always. It's a very important because the water gets in here and it's easy to clean. The hair actually goes all the way up to here in the ferrule. So if you're working a dry brush, if the paint gets up inside there, it's hard to get out and it wrecks your brush. So always prime your brush. Okay, we're going to take a little bit of the uh, Azo Yellow, just a drop. Shape it on a piece of watercolor paper. Put a drop on here. And here. Is That's pretty bright, isn't it? Clean the brush. Okay, so we've got our paintbrush dried. Touch it. The Azo Yellow is a great yellow. It's so powerful and permanent. I'm going to put a little bit of the yellow right on here too. Take another little drop. Watercolors are soluble in water. So even though it's on the paper, if I have a little water on my brush, just a drop, it'll pick it up again. And the trick with watercolors is to get the paint actually into the paper, not sitting on top. Once the paint is into the fibers of the paper, it's fairly, uh, fairly strong. You can run it under a tap and it won't even come out. Look at that, that's working out nice. I'm going to bring a little more across here. So now I'm getting green in my water. But with the Azo Yellow, I'm going to turn it and take a look. Isn't that beautiful? So these two are still not working together. I can't leave it orange, it's just far too too orange. Well, maybe I'm going to think this out. I have to get a little blue over here. Why don't I do this? Why don't I lift it? Take a little water, put it on here, and I'll let it soak right over everything here. And just put water on it for a few minutes just about there. Let that soak for a minute. And in the meantime, let me turn this around this way. And I'm really impressed with this Azo Yellow. But I'm making a rather circular shape and I'm bringing it down around the penguin where I see that little bit of orange. You see a little bit of orange in there? That'll heighten it. Then right around the sun, so I'm leaving this white halo or this lighter dry paper. There's the alizarin. Make sure it's clean. Clean, 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 clean. Always clean. Never dirty. Take a little alizarin. Now my paper's buckling, so I'll take... Uh, this pen right in the middle of the there lightly and let me throw in a little alizarin here and there just pat it in see it's not going to hit that mountain I'm very careful to stay away from it oh yeah keep that little circle around the sun see pat 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 the beautiful thing about watercolors is the paper does most of the work so that's the sweep method. I like that's the sweep method. You're sweeping the brush, creating a little pattern. Okay, I think that's good up there. Just a little more pure yellow right in here. Look, oh my goodness, look at that, folks. Azo yellow is an amazing color. I could just look at that and love it. A little bit there. I think uh, maybe a little bit right there. Okay, there, that's good. And let's see if it's going to come off because it is very wet. I take my finger and just roll it. You see the water come out there? Look at that. Oh, nice, that's good, that's good. If you're uh, really patient, you can lift off about probably 
70% of this, you'd have a hard time lifting this off because it has phthalo blue in it. Phthalo blue does not like to be lifted. And tapping, remember, tapping is important at this point because we're going for precision. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit in the water now because this colors here, we can put a little bit of it into the water. I take a little bit of that pure azo. See, see that right there? It's going to be like there. And I'm going to put it right in here. I'm so glad I left this little bit of white. Oh, this looks like it's in shade. I'm liking this picture. I'm going to admit it. I'm liking this picture. Little yellow here. Azo yellow. Watercolors change when they dry. I like that red cloud in this section here. I think what I'll do is just add a little bit of that technique that we just learned here up in the sky. So I'm going to keep it pushed down. See, going a little darker here. And what I'm going to do is soften the edges because I like this cloud here, see? So I'm going to come up here. This is wet, got to be careful. Just stipple it out, keep my eye on it. Now this is a pretty hard edge here. So while that's drying, clean off my brush so that it's damp, but not soaking wet. See, it's, and it's not blue, I don't think. <laughs> and I'm going to just come into that edge before it really dries. So wherever paint hits dry paper, you get a hard edge. So, see the hard edge here? It's only been sitting there for about maybe two minutes. So just going over it light, light, light with a very damp brush softens the edge. Sunlight is soft. I might even add a little purpley cloud there. How do we add a little purpley cloud? Well, I take very, very little small amount of blue like that touch it, kind of echoes the rocks, take a very small amount of the alizarin, extremely small amount, and just touch it into it like that. And there I get a very nice purple. You can probably go around the edge of the beak now. See with this purple, but not touch the mountain, be very careful. little purple here. Clean the brush off. Make sure it's not wet and soften the edge. Look at this, this little white spot here. I've, I've, it's showing up now. I better make that, uh, give it a little bit of azo and a little bit of the, this color here. Oh, look, now they, these match. Okay, stop, Mr. Mulvey. Oh, that has a yellow. That's not. Just take a little break now. Always take a little break to see what's going to be next.